Since the collapse of the Mengistu regime two years ago, the mood in the Eritrean capital Asmara has been one of euphoria. The fighters of the Eritrean People's Liberation Front have taken control after 30 years of armed struggle against the Ethiopian government. And they defeated one of the largest armies ever seen in Africa. The former Ethiopian president, Mengistu Haile Mariam, had been fighting a war on two fronts. His long-standing allies in Moscow had abandoned him and the days of Ethiopia's slavish adherence to Marxism were over. For Colonel Mengistu, one of the most despotic rulers Africa has known, time was running out. In the north of the country, the Eritreans had been tightening their military grip for several years, but often at enormous cost. When they captured the Red Sea port of Massawa from the Ethiopian government in 1990, Mengistu's air force bombed the town in retaliation, allegedly using cluster bombs and napalm. But the Eritreans fought on, Years of experience in the bush had made them a remarkable fighting force which relied heavily on teenage recruits, both men and women. Often they produced their own films to portray the horrors of the war. Days after President Mengistu fled Ethiopia in May 1991, his army in Asmara surrendered. The Eritreans immediately set up a provisional government. Now they're voting in a referendum on independence, but the outcome has never been in doubt. Next month, on the second anniversary of the Eritrean victory, it's almost certain that this former Italian colony will finally achieve its formal independence. But a new country. From Italian colony to British protectorate to part of the Ethiopian empire, Eritrea now wants to govern itself and become Africa's 52nd state.